in the last video, which I think is labeled number five on my YouTube channel, uh, I showed the gearbox all assembled with the sprockets and everything. And some of you may remember near the, kind of towards the end of that video, I guess, I talked about the escapement mechanism. And I said at that time that it wasn't, I didn't have it in that video because it was uh, upstairs. Uh, so anyway, here is the, uh, the beginnings of the escapement mechanism, okay? I don't have it finished yet. That's two square pieces of aluminum with four jack, uh, three jack shafts put through the, uh, the aluminum square material, okay? That bottom jack shaft there is probably going to stay that length, and it's going to have some bearings, which that, that's not a bearing, so ignore that. Uh, but it'll probably have some bearings that, that are going to go, maybe look similar to what you see in there, in there. Okay, well they'll probably go at the bottom, like down there on the plate, okay. And then the top jack shaft here, the one closest uh, to me, that's probably going to be cut, right? It'll, it'll be cut right here and, uh, and cut right here. And same thing with the, the, the one furthest away on the bottom. And, and the, the arms that we, that we saw in video number five on the, the large jack shaft, the one inch jack shaft, they're going to actually make contact. Want to make contact here? It'll tilt the mechanism backwards, kind of like that. And as it tilts it backwards, the next arm will hit this, this outer jack shaft. Okay? So the way the whole thing works is it hits, click, it's, it slides off, and as it slides off, the other arm makes contact with the fa farther one. So you kind of get a bang, slide, click. So it's, the whole thing rotates like this. So it'll, it'll make a noise very similar to we hear, like I said before in the other video, as a grandfather clock. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The tick tock is the contact here, the sl it slides off, and then the, as it slides off, the, the mechanism wants to fall, right? Because if, if you hit it here, and as soon as it slides off, what happens? It falls forward. And as it falls forward, the other arm gonna, is going to hit it and catch it and keep it from... Uh, and keep it from uh, rotating back this way again. Okay. So um, that's the oscillation to an escapement mechanism. So anyway, this is this is the beginnings to it. Uh, like I said before in video number five, uh, or in the Lego video that I have, this is just a, a replica, a scaled-up version of what we got going in the in the Lego. Okay. And I don't know if I can see it in this video. Let's see if we can see it here. There are some threads, and maybe you can get that there, right around that bottom jack shaft there. I already tapped and threaded that before. And uh, this little puppy here will probably go on there and, uh, and thread into those holes. And the reason that's necessary is because that little set screw hole that you see right there will actually um, be tapped into the shaft. So we have a way of connecting that jack shaft to the aluminum plates. And that's important because as the whole mechanism um, tilts backwards and forwards, it's got to be connected. Because if it's not connected, what's going to happen? This jack shaft's just going to spin here, right? It's just going to sit there and spin. We don't want that. As it spins, it's, it's, it's going to rotate. It's going to tilt that with it. Okay. So that, when I get this assembled and all put together and trial and error, probably a little bit there, but uh, then I'll take another video. But I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. That's the beginnings to the escaping mechanism, okay? All right, so today I'm, I'm finishing or I'm um, kind of finishing off where I left off, I should say, on video number five. I got to drill and tap some more holes on the one inch jack shaft and also on the three quarter inch jack shaft. What I didn't mention in video number five, if you, when you're, if you go back and look at that video, the, 
for most of that video, the jack shaft that's closest to us in that video, that's a one inch jack shaft, which is what that one is, one inch diameter. And what, not, what might not be obvious is the other jack shafts that are holding the sprockets are actually three quarter inches. So if anybody who's following this project and looks to build it in the future, just keep that in mind. And the reason why those other ones are three quarter inch jack shafts, kind of like that one right there, is because this little, this little gear here, the smallest of the gears that are used in this project, is 10 teeth. And since it's so small, the diameter, the diameter of that little guy right there, um, it is too small to fit on a one inch jack shaft. It won't fit over the top of this jack shaft, right? See, it won't fit over it. Okay, big sprocket fits over it, no problem. Even this sprocket here, I couldn't get any smaller than 34 teeth because any smaller than that, um, the sprocket plate would, would get in way of the chain that's going to have to go on here. So I had to do some calculations and some basic math to figure out how the smallest diameter I could fit on a one inch jack shaft with this plate, which by the way I had to grind down. You'll notice the same plate's right below it. So I took this plate right here, very same plate, and I uh, had to take a grinder and grind it down to this diameter. Which in the future with some different workflow processes we'll probably turn that down on a lathe. I just don't have a lathe right now. So anyway, the reason you're going to need both a one inch jack shaft and a three quarter inch jack, uh, two three quarter inch jack shafts in this project is because um, on the smaller sprockets will only fit <clears throat> on a three quarter inch jack shaft simply because they're just so small. And that, that does present some challenges. Okay, it really does. I had a he heck of a time figuring out. Um, as you can see, there it is on one of the jack shafts already. Okay, I had a heck of a time trying to figure out how am I going to put a big sprocket like that on a three quarter inch jack shaft. Because on the one inch jack shaft, I, I have this plate that's available. They sell it. Again, Azusa Engineering sells that plate, that sprocket plate. Nice and convenient, no problem. Fits on the one inch jack shaft. Everything works and matches up great. Okay. Um, but on the three quarter inch jack shaft, they didn't have a plate similar to that one. So, But they do have this other plate, so I've been using it. I've been using this one, and uh, as you can see, it's got a really long um, flange on it. Sorry. And this provides stability. Because before I was trying those little guys over there, and you can imagine this big old sprocket, that thing was flopping around like a fish out of water. So now we got some stability on the jack shaft with this sprocket, and uh, things are a lot better. So now we're able to fit one of these little guys, which by the way, I don't know if that's visible in the video, it's kind of hard to hold this video at a good enough distance, but there's a little, uh, there's a key in there, it's called a key, and I think you can see it there. See that little groove inside? It's actually a, a male protruded key, okay, and it fits over the key way right there, that keyway. So that's what's different about that little sprocket. A male key, Let's see if I can get this in there. Excuse my video, it's kind of hard to do. There it goes, see, it fits right over it. So, that's the business end of the three quarter inch jack shaft, folks. All right, so now today, anyway, like I said, I'm gonna continue to uh, drill and tap some holes on both um, the three quarter inch jack shaft, three quarter inch jack shaft and one inch jack shaft uh, that came out of the, the fitting that we did in video number five. So I'm gonna try to finish that up or at least get the drilling done and then we're gonna tap it on that bad boy right there. Uh, one of the things I know I briefly mentioned in another video was this V-block, okay? V-block, very handy. Very handy. Let me show you. I talked about that briefly in another video, but I wanted to go over that again. For those of you who are, who may be following this project, or you're just working on similar types of um, of materials, doing your own thing, um, 
Now look at that, that's convenient, huh? The V-block holds round material very well. Right, you just stick it in the V-block. Um, you center that puppy up, you know, gotta do your, your centering, your indexing, okay? But what's really cool about the V-block is that these little, let me show you here. Those clamps right there, that's one of them. Here's another one. They're very versatile because you can you can have them like this. Okay. Okay. Slides on there like that, one side, and then you push it on. So for large diameter material, you have room to play with and you just tighten down the bolts, depending on how much room you need. Right? It's adjustable. Now this material I'm working with, these jack shafts, their diameter is really small. So you can see that that clamp's not doing me anything. It isn't holding the material down. I can put my finger in there. So what I do is, and I'm sure other people are doing the same thing, is um, I just turn it upside down. Kind of in the way right now as I'm doing this backwards. I'm doing the back one. I just turn it upside down. So that's really convenient. Just turn it upside down, works just as good. Now I just tighten down each side. Okay, and that's the process I use, and then uh, you know I have I do it again with the with another clamp here that I got that goes with it. So I got two clamps holding down the material, and then I do my drilling. And then what I do is um, I use the exact same V block and move it over to the tap machine, which has its own little kind of vise in there. It's not really a good vise, but it's good enough. I just set the V block right in there. And then the back here are the holders for the taps. You know, you just stick your holders. And then you, there's a tap sitting right there. I'll find out which holder it fits into. Put it in there. There's a little set screw on the end of those. You just tighten down the set screw. You put it in the end of that bad boy. You shove it up in there and kind of turn it. And then it fits up in there and kind of you'll hear it click in place. And then you just apply a little pressure and turn it. And if you did your drilling over here properly, um, the thread will go smooth. So anybody who's do, just getting into uh, drilling and tapping, very important that you match up your, your drill bit size for your tap size. Okay, they go, they go together. For every tap, you have to have the proper size drill bit. Okay, and uh, what I do is, I got myself one of these little, hold on a second, I gotta do this one handed here. I got myself one of these bad boys right here. This is from Hoyt. Hoyt makes this little uh, drill and tap toolbox. Really cool. So, um, you know, you can just match up one drill bit for one tap. And that's what I do. I use this cool little toolbox from Hoyt. It works great. It doesn't have every size, but it has the pop popular sizes, standard stuff. That really helps me out. And if you want to know where to get some good American-made taps and drill bits, you can get those from uh, KodiakCutting.com. And no, I don't make any money on that site. That's just a site I use. I think they're up in New York or Jersey or something. But all their products are American-made, and I try to buy American-made as much as I can, you know, not always on, like that piece, of, that piece of junk, which is a good piece of junk, but it's from China, and this drill press is a piece of junk, and, but it's China made, but, you know, so, but I try not to do that as much as possible. So there you go, guys, I'm going to uh, finish off the drilling and tapping. And um, I'm not sure I'm going to do any more assembling today, but I just want everybody to see the V-block. Very cool. One more look at the tap. One more look at the uh, uh, part of the escapement mechanism, which is obviously not completed, but that's uh, the beginnings of it. Okay, guys, just keeping you up to date. Hope you enjoy. Talk to you soon. Bye.